Hi everyone, in this video I am covering most important Spring Security interview questions. So let's get started. How does Spring Security integrate with Auth2 for authorization? Spring Security integrates with Auth2 for authorization by acting as a client that can request access tokens from an Auth2 provider. It uses these tokens to authenticate and authorize users to access protected resources. When a user tries to access a resource, Spring Security redirects them to Auth2 provider for login. After successful authentication, the provider issues an access token to Spring Security which it then uses to verify the user's permission and grant access to the resource. This integration enables seamless and secure access control in applications. Moving to the next question, explain cross-origin resource sharing and how you would configure it in a Spring Boot application. Cross-origin resource sharing allows a website to safely access resources from another website. In Spring Boot, we can set up codes by adding cross-origin annotations to controllers or by configuring it globally. This tells our application which other websites can use its resources, what type of requests they can make and what headers they can use. This way we control who can interact with our application keeping it secure while letting it communicate across different web domains. Moving to the next question, explain security context and security context holder in Spring Security. In Spring Security, the security context is where the details about the currently authenticated user are stored like user details and granted authorities. The security context holder is a helper class that holds the security context. It's like a container or storage space that keeps track of the authentication information of the current user throughout the application. This makes it easy to access the user's detail anywhere in the application, ensuring that security decisions can be made based on the user's authentication status and roles. Moving to the next question, what do you mean by Auth2 authorization code grant type? The Auth2 authorization code grant type is a secure way to authenticate and authorize users. It works by directing the users to a login page managed by the Auth2 provider like Google or Facebook. After logging in, the user is given a code. The code is then exchanged for an access token by the application's backend server. This access token is used to access the user status securely. This process keeps user credentials safe as the actual token exchange happens away from the user's device, minimizing the risk of sensitive information being exposed. Moving to the next question, how does Spring Security protect against cross-site requests, forgery, CSRF attacks, and under what circumstances might you disable CSRF protection? Spring Security protect against CSRF CSRF attacks by generating unique tokens for each session and requiring that each request from the client includes this token. This ensures the request is from the authenticated user, not a malicious site. However, CSRF protection might be disabled for APIs meant to be accessed by non-browser client like mobile apps or other backend services where the risk of CSRF is low and tokens cannot be easily managed. Disabling CSRF in these cases simplifies the integration with these services without significantly compromising security. Moving to the next question, how can you implement method level security in a Spring application and what are the advantages of using this approach? To implement method level security in a Spring Boot application, I can use annotations like pre-authorized or secured on individual methods. These annotations check if the user has the required permission or roles before executing the method. The advantage of this approach is that it provides fine-grained control over who can access specific functionalities with Within the application. This means I can restrict sensitive operations at the method level, ensuring that only authorized users can perform certain actions, which enhances the overall security of the application. Moving to the next question, your organization uses an API gateway to route requests to various microservices. How would you leverage Spring Security to authenticate and authorize requests at the API gateway level before forwarding them to downstream services? At the API gateway, I can use Spring Security to check if requests are allowed before setting sending them to other services. By checking tokens or using Auth2 at the gateway, I make sure only valid and authorized requests get through. This means each service doesn't have to check security separately, making the whole system simple and safer. Moving to the next question, how can you use Spring Expression Language for fine-grained access control? I can use Spring Expression Language for fine-grained access control by embedding it in security annotation like pre-authorized annotation. For example, I can write expressions that check if a user has a specific roles and permissions or even match against method parameters.
parameters to decide access. This allows for a very detailed and flexible security rules directly in the code, letting me tailor access right precisely to the user's context and the operations being performed using spell in this way helps in creating dynamic and complex security conditions without cluttering the business logic. Moving to the next question, in your application, there are two types of users, admin and user. Each type should have access to different sets of APIs and points. Explain how you would configure Spring security to enforce these access controls based on the user's role. In the application to control who can access which API endpoints, I can use Spring security to set rules based on user roles. I can configure it so that only admin users can reach admin related endpoints and user users can access user related endpoints. This is done by defining patterns in the security settings where I link certain URL paths with specific roles like making all paths starting with slash admin accessible only to users with the admin role and paths starting with slash user accessible to those with the user role. This way each type of user gets access to the right parts of the application. Moving to the next question, what do we mean by digest authentication? Digest authentication is a way to check who is trying to access something online without sending their actual password over the internet. Instead, it sends a hashed or scrambled version of the password along with some other information. When the server gets this scrambled password, it compares it with its own scrambled version. If they match, it means the user's identity is verified and access is granted. This method is more secure because the real password is never exposed during the check. Moving to the next question, what is the best practice for storing passwords in a Spring Boot application? The best practice for storing passwords in a Spring Boot security application is to never store plain text passwords. Instead, Passwords should be hashed using a strong one-way hashing algorithm like Bcrypt which Spring Security supports. Hashing converts the password into a unique fixed size string that can be easily reversed. Additionally, using a salt, a random value added to the password before hashing makes the hash even more secure by preventing attacks like rainbow table lookups. This way, even if the password data is compromised, the actual passwords remains protected. Moving to the next question. Explain the purpose of a Spring Security Filter Chain and how would you add or customize a filter within the Spring Security Filter Chain. The Spring Security Filter Chain is a series of filters that handles authentication and authorization in a Spring application. Each filter has a specific task like checking login credentials or verifying if a user has access to certain resources. To add or customize a filter, I can define a new filter class and add it to the filter chain in the security configuration. This is done by using the add filter before, add filter after or add filter methods specifying where in the chain the new filter should be placed to ensure it's executed at the correct point during the security processing. Moving to the next question, how does Spring Security handle session management and what are the options for handling concurrent sessions? Spring Security handles session management by creating a session for the user upon successful authentication. For managing concurrent session, it provides options to control how many sessions a user can have at once and what happens when the limit is exceeded. For example, I can configure it to prevent new logins if the user already has an active session or to end the oldest session. This is managed through the session management setting in the Spring Security configuration where I can set policies like maximum sessions to limit the number of the concurrent session per user. Moving to the next question, you have encountered an issue where users are being unexpectedly denied access to a resource they should have access to. Describe your approach to debugging this issue in a Spring Security enabled application. To debug access issue in a Spring Security enabled application, I would start by checking the security configuration to ensure the correct roles and permissions are set for the resource. Next, I would examine the logs to see if Spring Security is throwing any specific errors or denying access for a particular reason. I might also enable debug logging for Spring Security to get more detailed information about the security decisions being made. Additionally, verifying the user's assigned role and the method level security annotations, if any, would help identify if the access rules are correctly applied. Moving to the next question. Question. Describe how to implement dynamic access control policies in Spring Security. To implement dynamic access control policies in Spring Security, we can use the Spring expression language within the pre authorized or post authorized annotations to define complex runtime evaluated conditions for access control. This allows the access rules to be determined based on the current state of the application, user properties, or method parameters. For example, by fetching roles or permissions from a database at runtime, we can dynamically decide whether a user can access a specific method or resource allowing for more flexible and context sensitive security 
policies. Moving to the next question, how do you test security configuration in Spring application? To test security configuration in Spring application, I use Spring Security's testing support, which includes annotations like with mock user or with anonymous user to simulate different authentication scenarios. I also write unit and integration tests that make requests to secure endpoints and verify the response based on the various user roles and permissions. By using mock MVC in Spring MVC tests, I can assert that the security rules are correctly enforced, checking if the access is granted or denied as expected. This ensures that the security configuration is working properly and protecting the applications as intended. Moving to the next question, explain salting and its uses in Spring Security. Salting in Spring Security means adding a random piece of data to a password before turning it into a hash, a kind of scrambled version. This makes every user's password hash unique even if the actual password are the same. It helps stop attackers from guessing passwords using non-hash lists. When a password needs to be checked, it's combined with its salt again, hashed and then compared to the stored hash to see if the passwords are correct. This way the security of user's password is greatly increased. Moving to the next question, how can you use Spring Expression Language for fine-grained access control? I can use Spring Expression Language for fine-grained control by applying it in annotation like pre-authorize in Spring Security. With spell, I can create complex expressions to evaluate the user's context such as roles, permissions and even specific method parameters to decide access rights. This allows for detailed control over who can access what in the application, making the security checks more dynamic and tailored to the specific scenario, ensuring that the users only access resources and actions they are authorized for. Moving to the next question, explain what is Authentication Manager and Provider Manager in Spring Security. The Authentication Manager in Spring Security is like a checkpoint that checks if user login detail are correct. The Provider Manager is a specific type of this checkpoint that uses a list of different ways to check the login details. It goes through each way to find one that can confirm the user's details are valid. This setup lets Spring Security handle different login methods like checking against a database or an online service, making sure the user is who they say they are. Moving to the next question, when a user tries to access a resource without the necessary permission, you want to redirect them to a custom access denied page instead of displaying the default Spring Security error message. How would you achieve this in your Spring Boot configuration? To redirect users to a custom access denied page in Spring Security, I would configure the exception translation filter within my security settings. Especially, I would set a custom access denied handler using the access denied handler method, providing it with a URL to my custom page. This handler intercepts the access denied exception and redirects the user to the specified page, allowing for more user-friendly error experience. By customizing the access denied response, I can provide clearer information or instruction to the users, improving the overall usability of the application.